Could you mix so that it is easy for us to know? Join quickly, come on. Ma'am, can you please mute me? Somebody else. Ma'am, we have started recording. Yeah. Okay, pardon? Ma'am, we have started recording. Okay, no problem. So, good morning, class. And uh, we will now begin with the chapter which we had begun, begun last time, Motions of the Earth. Now, we were doing the seasons. We were talking about the revolution, how it affects in causing seasons. And we also talked of that the earth takes nearly 365 one quarter days to finish one revolution. Now, as it finishes, now earth not always remains in the center. Uh, sorry, the sun does not always remains in the center. It is slightly at one point closer to the earth and at one point it is away from the earth okay like supposing i will show you now can you all see the blackboard can you all see the blackboard no ma'am no ma'am no. Wait a second. Wait a second. You will, you will see. You will gradually be able to see. Supposing this is the path of the sun. Now, this is the path of the sun actually. Sun is not exactly in the center. It is slightly towards one side. Now when the earth is closer to the sun, see this distance. And then as it is revolving, when it goes away from the sun. Can you see this? Now, this no, distance. No, ma'am, your screen is not visible. Okay. Yes, ma'am, your screen is not visible. Yes, okay, okay, okay. Is my screen on sharing? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Okay. No, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Okay, no problem. Now, we will read the uh, heading, fact files, given on page 133. The Earth takes 24 hours to find the sun in the same place again in the daytime. This is called the solar day. Please underline this. What is one solar day? It is that distance which Earth rotates in 24 hours and reaches the same place. That is called one solar day. Ek din ko, ek din jo hai, 24 hours in it. That is called a solar day. Also, the Earth finds the stars in the same position in the night sky after every 23 hours and 56 minutes and 4.09 seconds. This is called a side real day, star day. Okay, please underline this. Now, what is a star day? That means all the other stars in the heavenly body uh, and the heavenly bodies in the sky, they, while the earth is rotating, they come back to the same place. They appear on the same time, on the same day. Why? Because one rotation to see the stars is 23 hours and 56 minutes. So with just four minutes left around here and there, the position of the stars when the earth takes one full rotation, could be seen and could be realized as a star day. Okay, now coming to fact file. A calendar year is roughly the time the earth takes to travel once around the sun in 365 days. Now they are telling you that a calendar year, one year, which you see on the calendars with different months, etc., marked on it. Now, those calendars, any calendar is completed with one year when Earth has completed 365 days. Very simple. You have the calendar with number of months in it, 
if you count the number of days in each month from january 1st till december 31st you will see that there are 365 days and in a leap year you have 366 days okay so that is a solar year okay so the solar year has 365.24219 days which the earth takes to orbit uh, the sun to complete for the missing 0.242 day the western calendar adds an extra day in february every fourth year but misses out three leap years every four centuries okay so now they are telling you that every fourth year the fourth year has in the month of february one day added to it making it 29 days in february in a leap year okay is this much clear to each one of you now we talk of the yes. season yes season sir. thank you seasons are the division of the year according to regular or constant changes in the weather they occur as a course of annual cycle following are the two factors which give rise to season now we all know that the causes of the seasons are that uh, are only because the because of the revolution of the earth it is that the earth is revolving around the sun that is why we are having seasons so now the first thing which leads to season is the inclination of the earth's axis that means the earth with its axis slightly tilted can you see this slightly tilted axis it has it is not straight like this okay can you see no ma'am you can't see no ma'am wait a second my children i'm so sorry for that just let me try once more it is showing in mind that the screen is sharing इंक्लेशन ऑफ द like the it is tilted and that is causing the seasons okay had the earth been at a right angle perpendicular sorry uh, straight, uh, right angle 90 degrees then there would have been no seasons at all but since it is slightly tilted we experience seasons okay and the second factor is the revolution of the earth around the sun with its axis inclined Now it has 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 an axis which is inclined, and so Earth, while it is revolving, it is causing the seasons in the in the course of its 365 one quarter days. So a year is usually divided into four seasons, and what are they? Summer, winter, spring, and autumn season. Okay. Now, the figure on the right shows the movement of the earth around the sun and the position of the earth on four significant dates 21st march let us all come to the uh, to that date 21st march can you see on top the diagram given on page 133 on top it is written march equinox okay so let us first see the 21st march now here it is an equinox that means at this time it is the equator which is getting the light centrally and both the northern and the southern hemisphere they are getting the light equally distributed from the sun okay so that is called an equinox i will come to uh, come to this in detail now let us move on to the next uh, same page 133 now let us see the earth's position on 21st june can you see june solstice written there 21st june yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am 
this is the time where the northern pole is tilted towards the sun and it is the northern hemisphere is having winter sorry summers during this time so it is the summer solstice 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 okay so it comes in the month of june 21st june that is the time when the day and length uh, days and nights are of equal length then 23rd september can you see the third picture that is called september equinox okay and that is the autumn time in india if because india is in the northern hemisphere okay then we come on to the last one 22nd december can you see december solstice now that is the time 22nd december the interval between these days is about 3 months and in these 3 months we have these four seasons from june you remember, you know that in june july august we have summers and they are hot isn't it isn't it aren't you feeling yes, hot yes ma'am very hot yeah yes yeah, ma'am very which hot which is summer now while the september yes. comes by 21st or 22nd september you will start feeling the warmth the little cozy atmosphere and gradually september october november till 21st december you will have the autumn and the winters set in okay then winters from december till you know january february till march you have winters not exactly at march but yes end of february till that time you have winters and then from in winters gradually in march you start having a spring kind of new leaves grow and the new trees grow the greenery is all around so that is the spring time did you get this much did you get yes ma'am yes ma'am very good so these are the four seasons they have talked of now they are telling you that 21st june and 22nd december can you see the two pictures one on the left hand one on the right hand i mean on the same diagram two earth positions one on 21st june and the other on 22nd december can you see on page 133 the two positions yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am they are known as they are known as summer solstices and winter solstices very simple june solstices is known as summer solstices okay and december solstices is known okay. as winter solstices okay now solstices means please underline this sun standing still underline it sun standing still now uh, sun is always standing still but then it is the word solstice which is called like that or reaching the highest point it is the fastest limit over which the sun shines vertically north or south of the equator so it is during this time that the north pole is either tilted towards the sun and we have summer solstice in the northern hemisphere then it is the axis of the northern hemisphere turning away from the sun that means north pole away from the sun in december that is leading to winter solstice okay at that time we have the northern hemisphere being away from the sun okay is this much clear now coming yes, on to march yes, thank you so thank you so yes, much for giving us giving me responses yes. i love that now march 21st and september 23rd now see keep on seeing the same diagram 133 are you all there now see can you see the march 21st diagram equinox yes, and september yes, also sir. equinox so these are yes, the two sir. equinoxes they are known as equinoxes which means equal day and night underline this word equinox means equal day and night on these days the sun appears vertically overhead at the equator and the days and nights are equal all over the world on these two days on 21st march and 22nd september you have or 23rd september you have equinoxes that means days and nights are equal did you get it is this much yes ma'am 
Now, yes, next, yes, time, yes, yes, next time when we meet, we will take summer solstice, winter solstice, and the two equinoxes in detail, and we will finish off the chapter. Is this much clear till here? Yes, yes ma'am. Okay, so please, one of you, uh, throw me out of the call and end the recording, please. Can you stop something? Oh, recording, I am stopping.